my foot tripped on one of the metal connecting protruded parts of it. And so I didn't want to fall off the gazebo, of course. And the, the first thing that came to mind was just to grab the branch of the whipping willow. So I sounded, but it turned out that it was the open wire, not the branch of the gazebo, because it was, you know, all intertwined and I couldn't see. And so I don't know how much I want to go into necessarily the physical pains of it. It was an excruciating physical pain. But what's tremendously important and interesting to me is really what happened afterwards. But I got to say, I want to mention that moment of, you know, when you grab uh, the, an open wire. And this is, you know, in, in Armenia where the voltage is like, what, two. 20 i think it's not like 110 here i think so so i, I mean i got freaking fried you know so uh, holding holding on to the wire was such an in interesting experience in the sense that it goes against your instinct you you want to let go of the wire of course but the more force you put towards opening your hand to let go of the wire something three times four times more makes you hold it even tighter and so it's kind of against your intuition because after doing it a couple of times, you realize it's hurting even more. It gets more inside your bone when you're trying to let go. So you kind of just, after a couple of times, I mean, my body, I suppose, could not handle the physical pain of it. And so I just shook and just fell on the roof of the gazebo. My girlfriend, thankfully, was clever enough not to, you know, try to remove the, you know, push the wire or anything but she was screaming and I could hear her uh, so my body shot down because it wasn't able to handle the physical pain and I remember blackness for a few minutes or however long that was I can't explain the next thing I do remember clearly is seeing myself on the roof with my girlfriend screaming my name next to me and crying and I was slowly being lifted off away from my body but i was very um clear on what i was seeing it, it's as clear as i can see the screen and your face right now you know i was seeing my i was drifting away from my own body and um those few moments were the most serene um, experiences feelings i've ever ha had you know i'm a i'm a musician and so Sometimes when we play music, that that elated, transforming power of music, there are a few seconds where I can get the grasp of that, but it's very difficult to explain what it feels like with a human-made language. Um, it's almost like being in a beautiful dream, in addition to being intensely in love, that, that elated feeling. There's no sense of gravity and there's no sense of time no guilt no frustration no anxiety nothing it was the most incredible few moments of my drifting away from my own body but again i was fully comprehending what was going on i was very aware of the fact that i left my physical body and i do remember the only troublesome thought was that I comprehended what my mom, my sisters, and my dad would feel when they realized that I'm dead. And the only bothering feeling at that moment was, how do I let them know that I'm in a much better place than they are? Um, and I remember that feeling so clearly because everything else was fascinating and um, amazing. I saw um, the further I would go away from my body, the more uh, for you know upwards I would go, the more emerged in light I would become. There were there were lights, um, not necessarily circular, but sp spiraling of sorts, exuding out of everything from trees, from poles, from things that we call breathing or non-breathing objects. Everything, everything had its energetic flow that would somehow merge with me and the more I lift it up and up and up the more white light I would become but but I was aware of who I am you know what I mean maybe the notion of like no oh, my nose looks like this and my voice sounds like that started dissipating of sorts I don't know what would happen if I stayed in that state longer than the eight to eleven minutes I was gone but what I experienced during that snippet 
was that I was fully capable of understanding my a sort of spiritual or intellectual capacity of who I am, you know, regardless of the fact that I was being uh, melted into and a part of, of, of continuously evolving and floating light. It's almost like if you were a snowflake, like 20 meters above ground uh, and, and, and are falling it's, there's very little sense of gravity or time or like, I don't know, what do you, where does your mind go when you hear that? It's almost that state. Again, very difficult to explain. I wish out of the four languages I spoke, there could be adjectives I could express of what, what that felt like in any of these languages, but it's not possible. To me, music, perhaps sound is the closest thing that can come to expressing that transformative state, you know? Um, after I melted into complete light, was absorbed in light. Another moment where I don't remember visually seeing, perceiving anything happened to me. After that, I opened my eyes and I was in a green valley type of place. Um, it wasn't, yeah, it was a valley, but I could see a, a forest sur around me, you know, but I was in a more valley place. I tried to get up and I remember clearly my Auntie Frida's voice. Auntie Frida is my favorite auntie and in a way I'm closer to her than I was with my mom and dad to a certain degree when I was growing up and still continues to be that way. She called my and she's well and alive. She's you know I didn't see her I heard her name and from the intonation of her voice the way she was calling me Date, Date, you could see and feel that there was an urgency for me to go towards her voice where the call was being made. So there was nothing frantic about it, but um, but certainly from the intonation, I could sense that I needed to go towards her voice. So I got up and started running towards her voice. But I remember the distinct feeling of my entire realm that I was in being sucked into like a vacuum cleaner tube and the distinct feeling of my falling downwards in that tube, just I was sucked in it and, and for I don't know how many seconds that was, continued to go down. And at the end of it, I opened my eyes and I think the most unpleasant and horrifying thing happened then. You know, maybe like 18, 20 strangers were above my head. A man much older than me with like crooked teeth was pulling away from my face and I was so in complete uh, just uh, confusion. I, I pushed this man away. I only comprehended now, just years after, that this man was the one that gave me artificial breathing and pumped my heart and brought me back, you know. But I pushed him really hard away from my face. <laughs> and seeing the faces of strangers, I was lying down on the grass. So two gentlemen brought me down after my girlfriend screamed and, you know. Um, so th that was really terrifying because all these faces looked at me as though I was uh, dead and and then then the women had uh, would dip their hands in like cold bucket of water and like would slap my cheek because my eyes kept on going back and I and I kept on wanting to go back to where I was because it was so serene and peaceful versus this you know these strangers slapping my face with cold water that really terrified the hell out of me. Um, and I'm told that at the time I didn't speak English. Um, I mean, I was singing certain English songs, but I wasn't fluent or anything like that. But I'm told that I told them to get away. Like I heard later that I said English words to tell them to get, which is really strange. I don't know anything about that, nor do I specifically remember that. But I do remember that horrified feeling of like who are these people and what do you want from me and why are you slapping my cheek with you know cold water they were like don't you close your eyes little girl don't you close your eyes and i just that was so frightening so frightening um and then uh and then i thought i could stand up so pushed people away to try to stand up but i i uh, soaked in so much electricity my muscles were shot so i stood up and completely collapsed and and realized i was just serious it was an experience that I was not able to put into words or to intellectually uh, meddle with for about two years after it happened to me.